I want you to see the spirit of this woman. I want you to understand that we all have different things that we're going through in life. And it is the perspective and the attitude and the love that we bring through it and to it that allows us to touch other people in the way that we are here to touch them. And very much in the same way, her husband is just as much a teacher and an angel on this planet in the way that he has stood by her and uh, served in whatever capacity he's needed to serve and also has gone through this with her. And so I had to introduce the two of them to you. So it's nice to have you and to be invited into your home, Ken and Shamar. So thank you for having me here. It's beautiful to have you, to see you. <laughs> It's my honor, my honor and pleasure. So I want you to tell people about your story okay. and share whatever you'd like to share. Um, I was diagnosed at 18 with Crohn's disease. And uh, we had raised five beautiful children. And every time I was pregnant, my Crohn's went into remission. My husband comes from a big family, so did I eight and seven kids, and uh, we loved our children. I was the recreation director for the town in New Boston, New Hampshire, so I always worked with children. Loved children, loved their spirit and their, their energy and their, just their, their being. Mm. Um, but in 2001, I ended up becoming disabled with Crohn's, um, and I couldn't work anymore. I was very active with sports and whatnot, you know, with the kids. Um, we moved from New Hampshire to come to Florida to get, because my bone pain was really bad. And we moved from New Hampshire to here to gain uh, vitamin D from the sun to help with the bone pain. And then I was diagnosed with Paget's disease of the bone, which is a bone deterioration disease. And uh, then the Crohn's just took over and they kept cutting out and cutting out and we move in bowel resection after bowel resection to the point back in 2008 they sent me home on TPN which is total peripheral nutrition being fed through my bloodstream and to live out the last eight months of my life that they gave me to live. I had seen a documentary on television of a girl named Gretchen and the doctor was Dr. Kareem up in uh, the Cleveland Clinic Ohio. I called my insurance right away and told them that I had seen that and could I please try this experimental transplant. And she told me about Dr. Andreas Tosakis, who was trained under Dr. Kareem, and he's a world-renowned, 23 world-renowned record of saving lives and experimental transplants. And, the trans and he was within that work, which was wonderful, so I didn't have to spend as much money. And he was here in Florida. Right at Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. Wow. And so I met with him, and I had 10 months to, to do the workup to make sure I was ready for transplant. And I was. And I am the first person in history to have this six organ transplant and to be in and out of healing from it within six and a half weeks, whereas most people took eight months to a year or more to heal from mm. it. He told me to contact Guinness Book of World Records because I am the first in history so that I have started the process. I didn't want to care about it in the beginning because I just wanted to live and be with my family but now then when I started the paperwork I was living a normal life and why not? That way my family and my grandchildren will know. And others will know. Yes. That when you have the will and the spirit. Yes and the fight and you can do anything. Whatever you put your mind and your heart to, you can manifest and make happen. Now, what you experience is very painful. How do you deal with the pain, or what do you do in a spiritual sense or a mental sense to help you move and rise above what you're experiencing so that others going through whatever they're going through in their lives can also take some of your wisdom? I fortunately found a man, or he found me in Manchester, who is Ram Das. He found me and was waiting for me. So he contacts me and he contemplates and meditates for me. I myself meditate and go within and just connect with my soul. 
and my son and know that the love that I have for my family and everyone, the flowers, the trees, the animals, the simplest things, the ocean, the sound of the ocean, and I just tap into it. I just tap and then there's certain mudras I put my hands into and it helps me connect to the higher beings and to show me how to, to relieve this pain, which is a beautiful thing. Because I before that I never knew it really existed. But they do. They're all here for everyone. Yes. And you also see I see orbs. Yes. Uh, I have pictures on my camera. Kent we were at Disney celebrating my son's twenty first birthday. We went to Epcot. He wanted to drink around the world and we were leaving crossing the bridge and the moon it was a full moon and we were crossing the bridge and my husband said, Look, honey, my, my phone was dead. I had been capturing this pink orb and this green orb that just been following me for weeks, just in pictures, and you can see it. And it was quite big. It wasn't a little one. They're big. Um, and he, he gave me his phone to capture the moon because I love the moon. And so I took a picture. And Jacob, my son Jacob, my son Ben, and my daughter-in-law, Nicole, as soon as I took the picture, I turned the phone around of the moon and the green orb took over the whole entire moon. Mm. It was, and my, Jacob like, freaked out and I, and I knew it was just pure love that was there yeah. with us. Like Guccio, please. Mm -hmm. No, like Guccio. Okay. Yes. Actually, you won't be scratching at the door. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. So, I see these orbs and it's beautiful. But my family doesn't see them with their eyes, but they see them in the pictures. I see them with my eyes. And like my friend Susan, Susan Q. Brown, I have spiritual sisters, Christian Rodriguez, who, who have helped me become more in tune with myself and my beings and to see what is unseen. But they just who they are, their souls, you know, are very enlightened also. And I love them, I'm so grateful. They're my spiritual family. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's good to have that kind of support structure mm -hmm. around you, yes. Totally. So you're facing now another set of organ transplants. Yes. I have to heal from this infection because I had a perforated bowel, as I said, a uh, hole started to open up in my intestines and still was seeping into me and the pain was just the worst pain I ever experienced. This was just a week ago, no, before Christmas. And I had my surgery Christmas Eve on the Lord's birth. They didn't expect me to make it. I didn't expect to make it through it because the pain was so bad. And my husband, where's my phone, Can you can play the recording. He recorded it because I'm writing a book. Mm. Also, I am me. The true love story is what the title is. And I have bits and pieces, and when I'm better, it's all going to come together. I have a literary agent, which I'm so grateful for. And they're considering the first transplant. I had out-of-body experience where I was communicating with the higher masters. on, And I got to see that it's all about love, healing. It's just tapping into love. Yes. Everything is all fixable, doable. Let's open your heart and just love. That's all that's important is just love. And honestly, in my world, it heals well. And you're continuing with dreams or things that you want to do despite. Mm -hmm. Because there's part of the mission of the Rebel Road is to illustrate to people that we are here to live out our hearts and our dreams and that there's no excuse big enough for us not to continue that. Don't be afraid. Step out of your comfort zone and just do what feels right, no matter how scary it is. And that's what I'm trying to show him. And he's learning. He's learning. It's just difficult because not everyone sees the way that I see. I wish they could because then it'd just be so magical. Yes. So Ken, it takes a lot for an individual to span a number of years uh, supporting, standing by, taking care of someone that's going through 
the kinds of challenges that Shomra has been through. Talk a little bit about that and how um, you have supported yourself, or has it been uh, a challenge in supporting yourself through this process? It has been a challenge, but it's, <clears throat> you know, there are uh, other, you know, caregivers, you should say, um, but it's hard to find them, you know, because we, we've been with the transplant, there's a lot of people from out of town, out of, you know, or even in town, and they just don't have the, the support, and that's the only thing that gets, gets people, through. people through it. They Come have on. to have the love and the support. Um, it's a very minute thing, yeah. you know, yeah. um, but it's well known. Uh, I've always been a non-believer my whole life until um, the transplant, and I've seen Shamara just heal, you know, instantly. The transplant, believe it or not. Team. Yeah. the transplant team was coming in asking me how I was doing it. Yes. How are you doing this? Because, like I said, it took eight months to a year, and I did it in six and a half weeks. So I had 23 surgeons come in and ask me, how are you doing this? And I told them, it's as simple, just love and believe. Believe it and connect your heart chakra together, and it happens. Yes. And it's very hard to see a loved one go through. You know, we, we create and set up our realities to a certain extent to bring about certain experiences that we can gain uh, witness to. What, what is it in this experience that you think your soul wanted to encounter and learn and witness? I'm still trying to figure that out because there's something new every day that you experience, you know, you think you just might get it, but yeah. he always gives you something else. Yes. Yeah. What is it that can needs through this process? Um, just, just for everybody, just to know that, you know, they need someone to love, you know, um, they need the support. Uh, they can't give it. They can't get it. They're, you know, so busy trying to get over the pain or uh, the situation that they're in that they just need somebody there. And it doesn't have to be a husband and wife. It could be anybody, you know. Um, that person just needs needs to love and to know somebody is there to love them. To assist them and know that they're cared for. And that gets them through it. Yeah. Even Dr. Tasakis, my transplant surgeon, told you that mm -hmm. people are dying from transplants because they don't have the love and support. Because it's a lot to go through. It's a lot here on your mind and then your physical vessel. And if they don't have it, like there was the woman that we I got to tell her this, the story of the, the woman with the daughter from college that you made friends with. And I had her watch the movie The Secret in the hospital. I had brought it in. She had been there for all, over a year. She left the next day after watching it. I left two days later. Mm. But I shared it with her. But when she went home, she ended up dying. Because it so didn't continue. She didn't continue you know. it here or here. But at least she got out and got home. It's sad also. My friend Heather Daughtry. You cannot get addicted to the pain medication because it slows down your, your digestive tract and those organs are just poor. She sadly got a lot of people and Heather was one of them. She was from Alabama. She got addicted to the pain medication. She took longer to heal and she just passed away not but long ago and left her husband and three young children under the age of seven. Mm. And I feel so bad that she wasn't able to make it. And it's so love. much about yeah. the belief and then the love and then having that support to keep yourself in that place. Yeah. And She's the love isn't, you know, sympathizing with them. The love is being strong and for them hard. and, you know, telling them when they're doing wrong and what, you know, because they're not in their right mind. They just want... Um, Pain free. Right. You know, the free, freeness of, you know, pain okay. and 
the situation that they're in. So and sometimes they... The pain is so intense that she was just taking too much medicine and I heard at the end that she wasn't taking her anti-rejections the way she should have. It's just sad. Mm. So many people, even before transplant, uh, when I was getting ready for my transplant, or right after my transplant, the transplant team had me talking to pre-transplant patients, and I would prepare them mentally how to get ready for this and told them what not to do so that they would come on healthy. Do you think that that's part of the purpose that your soul chose to go through this experience is to help usher others that they I do. they do this in a way that they support themselves rather than fall into a path? Where exactly. They don't need to fall into that trap because of what most people do, just take the pain medicine and because and, it slows everything down, it could kill them. You have to rise above it and use your mind to heal yourself and envision yourself and what you want, what you see happening, and then focus on that. And once you put what you truly, your heart and your mind desire out there, you will manifest it. Mm. How do you not get into the anger? I'm sure sometimes there are feelings and emotions that come up of, why is this happening, or I don't want this anymore, or it's right. been so long, I'm just tired. How do you not go into those places that so many people do? It's easy to fall into. Um, that's where I say uh, I'm a non. I was a non-believer, but you just have to change your mind. Everything is there for you. Uh, like Shamar says, what you think about comes about. Yeah, what, right. what, you, what you think about, you bring about. You that's bring my about saying. Stuff. Good or bad. So, so if you're always thinking positive. good, you know. Everything good will come. Even like, for a few seconds you think negatively, that's all you're going to attract. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not, not to do that. And as, as an example, is that my phone? No. Can you shut it off, please? It's alright. It's perfectly fine. It's the universe chiming along. <laughs> we were in Key West for my son's Jacob, my youngest son, his uh, 18th. And we were down there having a little vacation. We rented mopeds and a Jeep, and we were going to get jet, jet skis. We were returning the mopeds. It was the first time I'd ever been on a moped, and I really didn't know how to use it. So Ken's driving first, returning it. This is how fast things happen in my world. And I'm returning mine behind Ken, and it's stupidly, in my mind, there was a baby blue Volkswagen bug parked on the side of the street as I'm taking the corner and a brick building next to it. And I'm thinking, oh, wouldn't it suck if someone crashed into that? Mm. Sure enough, two seconds later, I lost control and I drove into that bug. So as quickly as that thought came into my mind, it happened to me, I broke my knee. And we're so much in that time where things are happening faster <coughs> and faster. Yes. As we close out the segment, again, I want to thank you for your time and welcome me into your home. And, thank you. For your and time. just um, having the time to be with both of you. I'm happy I know you're going here. back to the hospital. Are there any words that you want to share with people watching as they go through their own different turning points and challenges in life in whatever area that they're going through that you feel like are the words they need to hear right now? Trust in yourself. Don't doubt yourself, because you're capable of doing more than you can even imagine. Just your mind. Even if you don't speak it and you just think it, you can make it happen. Thank you, Shamara. Kim, do you have anything that you'd like to share? Um, Final thoughts? Just like you say, um, trying to think of um, you know, the bad things and why they're happening. You never know, you'll never know why they're happening. But I always think positive, always think about love. Wow. And you'll always get love. So. Beautiful. Thank you, brother. Thank you. It is not what happens to us, it's how we handle what happens to us. And understanding that we are each teachers walking, allowing our own journeys to be the journeys that can experience and express a way that others can follow by example so that they understand how to go through and cope with the challenges that they're experiencing. 
deep gratitude to Shamara and Ken, uh, many blessings of love and light to both of them and their families, and I ask that you hold both of them and all of their families in the highest vibrations of love and light, giving them back a thousandfold all of the love that they share with one another and with the world in expressing what they're here to express in order to heal. In love, of love, with love and as love, I'm Simran Singh. Be well.